Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be doing an update on the bull market support band. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, unfortunately, Bitcoin did have a weekly close below the bull market support band. Okay, so that is at least a point for the bears. Now, additionally, we did at least stay above the 50-week moving average, which is where we closed, um, or what's more or less where we bounced off of back in July. So we're still above the 50-week SMA for now. Now, I don't want to act like I'm rationalizing because, you know, I, I understand the whole idea of rationalizing certain things and trying to make things seem like they're a different way, looking for something to, you know, to, to prove a point. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time discussing this, but it is something we should at least have on our radar, okay? And, and that is, and, and I'm not trying to sell it to you or anything, but it is, should we be focusing more on the entire asset class as a whole, not just Bitcoin, right? And, and the reason we say that is because, of course, the, you know, the dominance of Bitcoin has been dropping through the years, okay? It has become, you know... Uh, not nearly as um, dominant as it as it once was. Okay, and so with that in mind, I went ahead and I was like, okay, well, what is the total crypto market cap at, and where is its bull market support band? And actually, rationalizing or not, right? To be fair, rationalizing or not, we actually closed the week above the bull market support band. So. The, the 20 week estimate last week for the total crypto market capitalization was about 2.25 trillion. And we closed the week at, at about 2.27 trillion. So the total cryptocurrency market cap actually did hold the line, okay? Now, as I speak right now, we're actually slightly below it, okay? And, and the reason is because for the total crypto market cap, the 20 week is now 2.278 trillion for the 20 week. And then the 21 week EMA is 2.25 trillion. You can see we've actually temporarily fallen back down at least to 2.238 trillion. Okay, but I just wanna put that on your radar. Again, I'm not trying to sell it to you or anything like that, but it is something that we should at least be watching, especially if Bitcoin manages to get back above the 20 week SMA this week, okay? So we're going to spend the rest of the video talking about that, but I did want to bring this to your attention uh, with regards to the entire asset class, not just Bitcoin. Maybe give me your thoughts on that in the description below if you guys would like to see me provide updates on that in these videos in addition to, to Bitcoin. So let's go take a closer look at, at where Bitcoin is. All right. So right now, the 20 week has moved higher, in fact. Uh, the 21 week EMA has actually dropped down. So the 20 week SMA now is at 52.4K, 52.3K, depending on the exchange you use. And the 21 week EMA is now at 52.1K or 52.2K, depending on the exchange that you use. So it more or less ranges, I mean, it's more or less just around 52K, right? I mean, a 52K Bitcoin is basically around that bull mark spark band. So that would be the best case scenario for Bitcoin, okay? And I wanna talk about that scenario uh, here in this video, and then we'll talk about a couple other scenarios as well. So best case scenario for Bitcoin is that we get back above the bull market support band this week, okay? And it has happened in the past, right? It, it has happened once before, I believe, where we had a fairly decisive close below the bull market support band, but then the following week we got back into it, okay? And, and then we were still, we were, and then we had, you know, several more months of consolidation. I mean, it, you know, this, this occurred back in July and then we had, you know, consolidation until mid-October, uh, but we at least did get back in the bull market support band the following week. And you can see that was when the 21 week EMA, it crossed below the 20 week SMA as the 20 week SMA was heading up. The 21 week EMA crossed below, we were able to get back above it. So that would be the most bullish scenario in my opinion, right? The most bullish scenario for this week would be getting back above the bull market support band. Okay, so back to 52K. Um, and, and so that's what we said before, right? I mean, we had a weekly close below the 20 week SMA. Now we have an open below it. Okay, now 
a more bearish case would we also would we would be also get a close below the bull mark support band. And I think then we need to watch that 50 week moving average because that is ultimately what what saved us last time. You know, last time, if you remember, we, we always said, look, historically speaking, after a major drop, we get a bounce off the 50 week. That's not the hard part. It's getting back above the bull mark support band and then holding it as support. OK, we saw that here. We got rejected. We saw it here. We got above it, but then we failed to hold it as support and we ultimately ended up falling down. OK, this time it was different, right? I mean, this time we actually got above the bull market support band after bouncing off the 50 week moving average. And then after that, we held the line at 40K, right? We held the line and it actually corresponded to the 20 week SMA. It corresponded to the 50 week SMA. It also corresponded to the 100 day SMA. I mean, of course, there's a lot of confluence around that area when we held it at, at around 40K. The 50 week SMA today is around 47.4, okay? So if we're unable to get up to 52, okay, if we're unable to get up to 52, then I would be looking at, at 47, you know, the, the mid 47s to hold, okay? So we have sort of the bullish case. We have sort of a, a more moderate case. The bearish case would be going below the 50 week SMA. And, you know, you guys know my, my thinking on this cycle. I think the cycle is, is extended pretty far out. I mean, as we've seen before, um, you know, going from one cycle to another, they've increased in length significantly. You know, some people say, well, it's going to just increase by, you know, a month or two. But, you know, again, if you go look at, at prior cycles, they increased by much more than just a month or two. OK, you know, they increased by this one increased by you know, over 470 days. This one was an increase of approximately 330 days uh, so far. This cycle has unofficially lengthened by only 21 days. OK, so the idea that the peak has to come in, say, Q1 of 2022, I, I think is also a little bit. Uh, perhaps too too optimistic um, in terms of on, being on the bullish side, uh, but it could still f be several hundred days out, right? I've said before we could easily go well into 2022, maybe even in 2023. Uh, this is this is the theory we've had on the channel forever that this cycle does not have to end in 2021, and so the point is to say on a macro scale, on a macro scale, I would still argue we are generally intact the, the market cycle is generally intact right i mean uh sorry i didn't mean to click off of it but it, it looks generally intact to me okay um if we move remove those drawings we see we've seen them lengthen significantly okay so i would still argue there's a good chance that we could still be lengthening for quite a while here and so what happens in the short term is somewhat irrelevant with that said i know it's not really a constellation price for people who are somewhat scared right now so that sort of brings up the next point, right? At what point would we say, you know, the, the market is, is just breaking down, right? And it's not playing out like we think. Well, I still think it's going to play out like we think. Like it's, I think we're going to have a lengthen cycle. Uh, clearly, you know, there's a lot of chatter about whether that's going to play out or not at this point, considering we just had a fairly sizable drop. But one of the things we can look at, we can look at a couple other indicators. Okay, we're gonna, so we're going to look at, at I, at least one other indicator and, and maybe two. All right. So the first one we want to look at is the fair value. Okay. And the reason we want to watch the fair value is because when we go below it, it has historically meant the cycle's over. Okay. So let me show you what I mean by that. And, and maybe I'll do a whole video on this later this week. Uh, but just to give you a quick idea, when we broke through the fair value, the cycle was over. Here we held it and we continued on for another leg. Here, we broke it, the cycle was over. We broke it, the cycle was over. Here, we held it, we continue on. We're still not, we're not even testing it right now, okay? So the fair value for Bitcoin right now, the center line is around 31K. This band actually ranges from 25 to, to 38K, okay, 25 to 38K. A pretty big band, of course. Um, and, and also it is monotonically increasing, right? So, I mean, even though the fair value today is at 31K, you know, back in, in July, the fair value was at, at 25K. Okay, so every month, you, know, you would expect this to continue moving up by one or $2,000 every single month. So again, the fair value today is 31K. So 
if Bitcoin, as long as Bitcoin stays above this fair value, if history is any indication, then I think the market cycle is still intact, right? The market cycle is still intact. However, if we break below those levels and the bears are in fact right, then you're looking at, at, at long consolidation, okay? I mean, long consolidation, like, like what we've seen in the past, these, these types of moves, okay? So ideally speaking, for the Bitcoin market cycle to remain intact, we would like it to stay above the fair value, okay? And again, it's moving up every single month by one or $2,000. It's already at 31K today, uh, and it is continuing to move higher. And we saw it, we saw it back over here, test those levels. It actually tested the bottom of it, and then we went on to the second leg of the cycle. So if you're curious, what are my thoughts on that? A lot of people have asked me. I just wanted to, to provide a brief, a brief update on that. The other thing you could probably look at is the 100-week SMA. Going below that, I mean, you know, by that point, you're, you're basically back in accumulation anyways, right? I mean, the, 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 the most brutal part of the bear market is, is often over by that point. But going below the 100-week SMA is, is not a good thing at all, okay? And, and that typically means you're at least going to get a year of, of some type of accumulation off and on, okay? Uh, or, or, or around those levels. Maybe not always below it, but around those levels one to two years. Currently, the 100 week is all the way down at 29K, all right? So it's moving higher. And so the, you have the 100 week at 29K, you have the fair value at 31K. They're both moving higher every single week, every single month. They're both moving higher. Um, so I don't think we are in danger right now of invalidating the, the overall market structure, okay? I don't think we're in danger of invalidating it. Um, Clearly, a lot of people are scared uh, because of, of us falling below the bull market support band. Uh, but I, I, I think we need to see what happens this week, okay, as well. We want to see what happens this week. And, and as we continue to, to, to finish out the year, can we remain in these levels up here? Can we remain above, above 50, the 50 week SMA? Um, and if, I mean, if that would obviously be a very bullish scenario if we can, if we can just kind of get back above it and continue on. But even if we don't, even if we don't, I, I would still argue that there's still a good chance the cycle continues to go on as long as we stay above that fair value, which is what we've, which there's the fair value, there's the 100 week, they're both moving higher very quickly. As long as we're staying above this, then I, I think we're still looking pretty good. Okay, so, I mean, I, I know this isn't, it's not, this is not the, uh, the video people wanted to see this week, right? Uh, it was. It would have been nice for us to hold the line, but you take what you get, okay? And, and we are, in fact, back in the sandbox um, for however long, okay? I do think eventually we will come out the other side, just like we did over here. I think a lot of people are going to assume the cycle's over and that we're going to go back to $10,000. Uh, but I do think also that time is on our side and that we will, that Bitcoin will ultimately prevail. The lows that we hit earlier this year, I mean, these were, you know, 29k or so we've said before that this is more or less in my opinion a long accumulation year between 30 and 60k uh, i think that's more or less played out we've gone to 30k we got 60k back down to 30k back up to 60k almost 70k uh, right now we're at 48k 49k so we're sort of um not i mean not quite at the halfway point but more or less at the halfway point uh between 30 and 60k so I do think there are more exciting times coming later this cycle, but we have a little bit of work to do in the short term to get back above the bull market support band. And, and so in order to do that, we need to get back above 52K, all right? If we don't, if we don't get back above 52K, then we are, we're likely in some type of consolidation phase again until we can break back above like we did over here, all right? So if we don't get back above the 20-week SMA soon, and just you know get back above hold it as support and continue on then i would i would just say look there's probably a good chance we're just in some type of long or reaccumulation back in our sandbox once again to accumulate at lower prices and then, then to ultimately trend higher and prevail those are my thoughts on the market uh, i know not everyone agrees with them uh, but of course you come here to get my thoughts if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. We also do the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.